Hi, I'm George and welcome back to part six of the Horizon series. Now this week we're going to have a look at the launcher design and we're going to start manufacturing parts of it. Uh, we're going to have a look at how this was made. This is the release head that holds down the entire rocket. Uh, and then later we're also going to have a, a static test of this. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. Due to the high pressures involved with this rocket, we've decided to make this launcher fully remote controlled. This means that all the air handling is done at the launcher end and we control the valves and launch release electronically. Now this launcher is also being designed for future projects and so it's able to handle pressures of up to 3000 psi. The launcher itself consists of a base with legs to keep the whole thing stable. Attached to the base is also support for the rocket. Mounted on the base is the remote control electronics box and next to that is the air control box that contains the air manifold and control valves. The compressed air is supplied from two scuba tanks sitting on the ground next to the launcher. We're going to need a lot of air for this rocket. Also mounted to the base is the central release head that holds the entire rocket down and supplies air to the sustainer. Around that are three launch tubes that go inside the booster. And then the rocket sits on the launcher like this. We'll cover the details of each of these components in separate videos. We wanted to be able to load the rocket onto the launcher without a ladder, and so the entire launcher can tip over like this. We can then slide the dry booster onto the launch tubes and lock it into position. We then fill the sustainer with water and slide it into the booster and lock it into the stager. The whole thing is then tipped back up for launch. The boosters can then be individually filled with water from the top. We considered setting up a water pumping system, but due to the added complexity of the required high pressure plumbing and valves, we decided to just put plugs at the top of the boosters and fill them that way. Again, without a ladder, this setup allows us to lower the rocket just before launch, so we can access the top of the sustainer to arm any electronics and start cameras. So let's look at the first launcher component. The release head is based on the same two lever principle as the stager, though we have more confined space to deal with and we also need to handle much higher loads. Thankfully this part stays on the ground and so can be made from stronger and heavier materials. This is the primary lever that grips the bottom of the stager. And this is the secondary lever that holds down the primary. A larger servo motor at the bottom releases the secondary lever. The release mechanism is mounted on top of a steel pipe that fits between the booster segments. So let's see how it's made. We start by machining a brass section that will form the stager seat. This is what the bottom of the stager will sit on. At the top is an o-ring that fits inside the stager. At the bottom is a section that mounts the seat on top of the steel pipe. A copper tube that will supply air to the sustainer is soldered into the bottom. We also machined an adapter for the other end of the tube that connects to a high pressure hose. This is just the standard scuba high pressure hose that uses these kinds of seals. The hose will just run through the steel pipe as the pipe itself is not pressurized. We then cut off the sides to fit the primary lever. This then gets milled down to make the sides nice and flat and parallel. The primary lever is made from steel RHS with a wall thickness of around 2mm. Cutting this stuff by hacksaw is not fun and so here we're using some power tools to make it somewhat easier. At this point, we needed to get some precision welding done in order to fit the lever's grip exactly in the right place. We didn't have the welding equipment, but knew where there was some, and so Dad packed his bags, grabbed the parts and flew to Tasmania, a thousand kilometres away, to visit our good friend George. George not only has the skills, he also has a very well-equipped workshop with lots of CNC machinery. 
The first thing he did was to nicely square off the primary lever with a mill after our hack job with the circular saw. He then reinforced the sides of the lever by welding extra plates on the side. Here he's cutting a slot in the lever to fit the grip. The steel grip was made by first machining it from a piece of steel and then drilling out the correct size hole for the stager. Then it was back to the mill to cut it in half with a nice square edge. then finally trimming off the sides to give it the correct shape. And here he is welding the grip into the exact place where it's supposed to go in the lever. After some more grinding and milling, the lever was almost complete. George also made up the pivot pin and fitted it for us. Here he's giving it a bit of heat treatment to harden it. What great service. With many thanks to George, Dad grabbed the assembled release head and headed back to Sydney. Now back in the workshop, we could start prepping for the static tests. For this test, we made a short section of steel pipe so we could mount the release head in the test stand. It's bolted on the same way it will be bolted on the long pipe. Because we don't want to damage the stager just yet, we first machined a part that represents the bottom of the stager. It's made to the same dimensions using the same material. We again attached an eyeball to the top of it so it could be attached to the test stand. Here we're putting the release head into the test stand. We're only doing a static test here to see if anything breaks. The lever is locked in the closed position. As we apply a force of around 7,000 newtons, we carefully watch for any deformation or cracking. Now the load equivalent at this point is the weight of a Formula 1 car. When we inspected the aluminium part after the test, it looks like that it withstood the forces. We still need to do the dynamic test where we release the stager, but this was a good start. Perfect. Well, that's it for this week. Next week, we're going to have a look at how the air control box is made. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.